over the past two years, I've been learning more about climate change and sustainability. And it seems to me that peak oil is a call to action for us to start living in a more sustainable way. And in order to understand sustainability, the first thing I had to do for myself was to define it for myself. What exactly does it mean when I say, I want to be living in a sustainable way? If you go to the internet or you go to the Environmental Protection Agency, they'll have a definition of sustainability. Capable of being continued indefinitely with positive long-term effect on the environment. That's actually my definition. The definition we'll find on the internet is no negative impact. Well, I'd like to think that we can have a positive impact on the environment, and that's what it means to be sustainable. The EPA says, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So with these words, I started thinking about, well, who is living sustainably exactly? Exactly who is living sustainably right now? Maybe I can emulate them. And so I was thinking about sustainability, and I thought to myself, well, what are the traits of sustainability? Well, if I was living in a sustainable spot, I, there would be lots of trees and wildlife. It would be beautiful. There would be nature noises. The smells would be nice and pleasant. And the population of wherever I was living the state, the city, the bioregion would be constant. This is our house. And I think to myself, how is it that I can live within this little one and a half acres and be sustainable? In other words, live in a way that I am not um, using up resources in other parts of the planet. Is there a way that I can not import anything? Can I grow my own food there? Can I make my own electricity there? Can I have my own heat to keep me warm in the winter? What would I need to do to be sustainable on that 1.4 acres? And then I think, well, maybe 1.4 acres is too small. Maybe I need to go to my parents' house, way up north of, towards Traverse City Way. And maybe then I could be sustainable. I could live in their house. Uh, we could put up some wind turbines. We could grow food. Um, we could live in a way where we weren't using fossil fuels where we weren't cutting down trees for our products and our clothing and all those things, and I could live in a sustainable way on the 80 acres that are there. Could I do that? Could, could anybody do that? So then I needed to look at what are, the, what, are the, what are the examples of sustainability in the world? And the examples I found, well, the first was the counterexample, <laughs> Rapa Nui, Easter Island. Has anybody heard of Rapa Nui, Easter Island, before? I didn't know much about Rapa Nui until I read a book written by Jared Diamond. And he had won a Pulitzer Prize for his book, Guns, Germs, and Steel. And then he wrote another book called Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed. And in that book, he talked first about Easter Island and how when Europeans first landed on Easter Island. Things looked like they were going fine. There were people there. There were trees there. And when the Europeans landed the second time, a couple hundred years later, there was nothing left. It was barren. There were no trees. The people were small, scrawny, and they were eating rodents for food. Easter Island, as you can see, is still deforested. And the small areas they've attempted to reforest are coming along, but they haven't done much in that way. So maybe sustainability has something to do with trees. It certainly has to do something with taking care of your environment so your environment is such that you can live. <laughs> so if that's the counterexample to sustainability, what's the example? Well, another example, which was in uh, Dr. Diamond's book, is the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean. On one half of the island is the Dominican Republic. On the other half of the island is Haiti. And from outer space, if you look closely on the computer, you can see that Haiti is basically deforested. And you may have heard stories of how, in order to get nutrition, they mix uh, fat 
into dirt and they suck on that to get the nutrition because it's so poor. It's the poorest country in the world, at least on this side of the world. The Dominican and the Republic on the other side, it's not in a great position, but it has trees and it has an organization and a government that understands something about the environment. So maybe this is, a, this is an example of two different systems, one that works well and one works not well. So finally, in Dr. Diamond's book, we found this example of sustainability, an island. The smallest island I think I've ever heard of supporting the largest population on that small area. This island is called, I call it, Tacopia. And Tacopia is near Vanuatu and is part of the Solomon Islands. People have lived on Tacopia for 3,000 years. Their population has been about 1,200 for 3,000 years. If their population had been increasing even at 5% per year, they'd be over like 8 trillion by now. So somehow they found a way to live sustainably. And if we look at that island, we find it's full of forests. It's basically a forest garden. Anywhere you go, food is growing. When the hurricanes came past last year and destroyed some of their crops, they ate the food that they only eat when a hurricane comes, the stuff they don't really like, but they'll eat it because it has a nutritional value. This island, to me, is the example of sustainability. The people living there have lived there 3,000 years within their means. Their population has been maintained. When they recognized that one of their um, food sources, the pig, was eating up their vegetables, they decided in a conscious choice that it was people or pigs, and they exterminated the pigs so that they could live sustainably on that island. That was 400 years ago. So for this conference, I'd like you to keep in mind what is sustainability exactly? How do we get to sustainability? How do we go from our current unsustainable way of life to a sustainable way of life? How can we do it in Michigan? How can we do it in our basin, our watershed? Could we be sustainable? We talk about our Great Lakes Compact, where we try to keep all the water that falls on the Great Lakes Basin within the Great Lakes Basin. Can we do that with other things? Can we do that with energy? Can we do that with trees? Can we become sustainable as a, as a watershed? Do we have to go smaller than that? Do we have to go down to individual river basins? Do we have to go smaller than that? Do we have to go down to city level? Do we have to go smaller than that? Do we have to go down to neighborhood levels to become sustainable? The world is a beautiful place. And in the future, I'm hoping that we have a beautiful place to live. And for my, babe, my son, Michael, who is 11 months old now, I'm hoping there's a beautiful place for him to live in as he gets older. But it's gonna be up to us to do what we can to take a step towards sustainability so that his generation can take another step towards sustainability. And hopefully, in not too long, we can get there together. Because we only have one planet Earth. It's our home. And we are of it.